Hi everybody. So, wind and water, perhaps two of the most important things we have in renewables, and for very good reason. They've been used for centuries and they're still used today. Now, physics understands wind and water to basically be the same thing. They're both fluids. Those fluids flow. It's what defines a fluid and separates it from a solid. All fluids flow. It's how we get wind. Because a liquid like water and a gas like air differ. The difference is a liquid will flow to fill the volume. A gas will fill whatever space you put it in. Despite those differences, of course, they're actually really, really similar on how the power is captured from them because they're both fluids. This is the main wheel of a traditional water wheel, which is great for turning corn, but when it comes to electricity, not much use. Then along came Lester Allen Pelton, who in the 1870s developed the Pelton wheel. The defining characteristic of the Pelton wheel is its bucket shape. As the jet hits, it splits, goes around the curves, and the extra push back adds to the efficiency of the overall wheel. The Pelton wheel extracts energy from the impulse of moving water, not like the dead weight of a traditional water wheel. So given that wind and water are both fluids and basically both the same, and that the Pelton wheel is so much more efficient because of the extra pushback, that it gives, you would think, wouldn't you, that somebody would come up with the idea of putting the two together. Well, they did. It's a German chap called von Kanstein, and it was in patent number 4120908. It's a German patent written in German. But if you happen to read German and you can look at the diagrams, then you can work out what's going on. And he explicitly says in the patent that the Pelton wheel was his inspiration. And when you look at the drawings, it's very clear that that's the case. Now, for the sake of completeness, and in case you can't get hold of the drawings, I have included all of the drawings, so you probably got the idea after drawing two or three. Okay, that's all interesting stuff, but of course the big question is, does it actually work? Well, I turned straight to Google Scholar, of course, and had a look at a few of the research papers, and I picked this one. Mostly because it had some pretty pictures in it. It showed the velocity field, and it showed the pressure field, and it gave you a good idea of what was going on. And in conclusion, what they said was that it did, in fact, increase the lift. And of course, what that means is increased torque, and increased efficiency of a wind turbine. That is super exciting. There are basically two types. This is kind of a Savonius type with the fin leading into a cup. And there have been various makes of this, right from some very beautiful metal examples like this one, to some really basic ones made out of um, plastic like this one. They seem to come mostly from Germany, which is no real surprise, given that's where the patent's from. There's also a Dureus type, which is like this, with a curved over wing. Again, that's on the patent. And there are various ones of this, including a full build instruction. And this is where this particular video came from. But if you want these things, you just have to put in C rotor and pile through the video. Now, I'm frequently asked to show how I think. And if you think about it, that's exactly what this video is about. It's about the process. So you have a look at an idea, investigate its history, see where it came from, have a look to see if it's any good, is there any other research on it, and then what are other people doing? Where I go from there is, okay, how can we make this better? Now, of course, an immediate thing that strikes me is that those cups that are put on the Pelton wheel have that double kind of cup. And if you look at the turbines that have been produced, it's only a single cup. You have to ask yourself, why didn't they replicate the Pelton wheel in its entirety, that is, with the double cup? Chances are, it's difficult to manufacture. That's exactly the trouble that Pelton had. Those cups had to be hand-moulded and then cast from those moulds. But of course, these days, we all have the luxury of 3D printing if we want it, and making double cup cups won't be that difficult. So, of course, the next phase I'm thinking of is, can we make the double cup cup? version and will it work better than that single cup version and that's what I'll be getting on with.
certainly a very interesting idea seeing a beginning of growth in using it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.